So here we are to discuss uh, what is seen as a great day for many. Article 7 has been discontinued. The proceedings have been brought to a close by the decision of the European Commission. We have Bogusov Rabota, Editor-in-Chief of Rzeczpospolita Daily, here with us at TVP World. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon for all. So uh, we hear that uh, Justice Minister of Poland, Adam Bodnar, and Prime Minister Donald Tusk have contributed hugely to bringing Article 7 procedures to a close. Uh, and we know that Adam Bodnar presented a plan, a detailed plan in February, uh, outlining the changes uh, that would be implemented here in Poland. Uh, would you be able to uh, enlighten our viewers as to what was presented in that plan and what has been implemented exactly that has allowed for this day to be upon us? I'll tell you that, uh, of course, there's a big day for Poland uh, just uh, when the uh, European Commission withdraws from the procedure of the article of number seven, but it's also a great asset, political asset, asset for, for Donald Tusk and Bodnar and its government. That's a uh, uh, good uh, sign for all our partners and strategic friends in Europe that we are able to, to manage this country without a violation of, of, of uh, rule, of, rule of law. Um, what about this plan presented by Adam Modar first is to say that uh, it, it's not implemented. These are plans only, but enough credible for European Commission that uh, this uh, procedure of Article 7 was uh, just uh, um, withdrawn. What are the main important points? I think that two of them. First, uh, I mean, uh, the new regulation about the uh, Council of uh, of judiciary uh, that will be changed and returned to to judges, not managed by politicians. And the second thing is just uh, division between um, position of minister of justice and uh, general prosecutor. These are, uh, from my point of view, the most important points of this nine point um, plan presented by Adam Bodnar. And I think that this is a warranty that uh, there will be no more uh, just uh, violations of rule of law in this country. But some would argue perhaps that we are in a situation where EU law is more important or it takes precedence over domestic law. Is that a good thing? Uh, this is natural. Uh, there is no, no other way in the uh, e Union like uh, we have, I mean, European Union, that uh, domestic law is superior on uh, 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 common law, I mean, uh, law of the Union, because uh, that's against the sense of integration. So integration means uh, that we have just to have the same rules. And these are, these are equal warranties for all citizens of European Union. And also in Polish constitution, we have a pretty clear statement that, well, that uh, uh, rules uh, taken by um, our orga international organizations that we belong are uh, more important than local law. So it's pretty um, coming from the Polish constitution, such rule. So now, some of the critics, including the former government, are saying that these proceedings were political right from the start, that they shouldn't have been there. What is your take on that and these accusations which are being leveled against European Union authorities? Of course, it was politics, but um, on the other hand, um, the law and justice coming to the power eight years ago, even nine today, uh, they, they they declared in a very precise way that this party will try to change, I mean, the standards of law in Poland. And and uh, before uh, law and justice was in uh, power, uh, you know, this separation of Ministry of Justice and uh, uh, and persecutor, general persecutor, was in practice. They changed the rule. The other, the other matter is that, you know, it was really the strong attack on the judiciary, independence of judiciary system and, the, and thousands of protests on the streets and 
Um, also, there were some uh, important sentences of, of European tribunals just uh, declaring precisely what is a violation of rule of law in Poland. So, uh, of course, it was politics. Uh, but from the other hand, we had uh, pretty well documented uh, proofs of the violation of the legal system, constitutional system uh, that we had in this country. So now, m moving up, you know, uh, moving from the uh, debate concerning the political nature, we also have another country which is being investigated for violations of a similar kind, Hungary. And now, what do you think is going to happen when the Hungarian presidency begins? Will they not try to turn this political nature against European structures and against countries which are willing to uphold these rules? Because now they will have a major say in whether this is actually going to continue. Do you think they could derail this process? Because they s certainly don't seem to be backing away. Uh, quite the opposite, isn't it? Mm, yes, it's true, but uh, I am very much opti optimistic about the future of Hungary. Uh, every every power, uh, political power, comes to, the, to its end, and uh, I think that Fidesz also is on the highway to to lose its uh, dominance in on the Hungarian uh, political scene. We have elections uh, in a week. And there's a new power coming from um, political market in Hungary, the party of Peter Major, uh, that the, by polls or southeast is just uh, mm, has a perspective of getting 30% uh, of uh, votes, means that they have a strong competition that will uh, probably will limit us, uh, Mr. Viktor Orban and Fidesz in this uh, pro-dictatorial attempts that, that they try to to uh, uh, push in, in, in European Union. So I'm optimistic about the future. I'm, I don't think that uh, really Fidesz and uh, Viktor Orban, the leader of Hungary, will uh, change the basics of European democratic systems. And, uh, and Hungarians will have uh, their own 15th of October in, in a pretty soon, I believe. Well, I think, I think Mr. Orban has a lot of support in Hungary. It'll be, it, it will be interesting uh, to see what happens, and I'm sure we'll have you back to, to discuss that. But if, if uh, Orban does win uh, and, you know, the supposed uh, rule of law issues continue in Hungary, uh, what will happen in regards to the Article 7 proceedings uh, in Hungary? I'm not a prophet. I cannot say um, what, well, well, I what ask, the future will I be. Well, I ask. But, I ask yes. because uh, you know, had had these uh, had the situation continued in Poland, there was obviously the risk that Poland would have to face sanctions and it would lose voting rights. So I, I just wonder that, in light of what is happening in Hungary uh, and the presidency that it's supposed to take on, how would that situate? How how could that situation perhaps develop? I will tell you, the shadow that we had over our constitutional system and, and over democracy in Poland is over. And I don't think that uh, Mr. Orban, even having a presidency in European Union, will have power just to change the situation. And uh, and I think that it belongs, it belongs to Hungarian nation just to change the political situation locally uh, in order to withdraw uh, seven are a seven article procedure from Hungary. Uh, I, I really believe that it will happen pretty soon. Okay, I just want to go back to, to Poland uh, just very briefly, because even though the Article 7 uh, proceedings have been brought to a close formally, uh, uh, my understanding is that Poland will still be monitored when it comes uh, to the rule of law. Uh, can you give us a little bit of insight as to how that will be implemented from here onwards? <clears throat> of course, that's the very truth about uh, the next, I mean, political season, that we will be under permanent monitoring of union because of a pretty simple fact. Uh, these reforms declared by uh, Professor Minister Bodnar, these are, excuse me, uh, uh, these are still not implemented, so we must wait for the moment that they will be really implemented, and and also European um, Union, I mean, the uh, Commission will wait for for this day, 
uh, and maybe after it, it uh, we will have a chance, and it will take probably us, you know, probably one year, even more. Uh, probably next president will be uh, warranty of uh, really uh, exact changes uh, after uh, this one year. The two, these reforms are, are completed. Uh, I mean, the monitoring will be finished. So essentially, we're looking at a situation where the proceedings have come to a close, but hugely significant changes haven't been implemented yet. That's the bottom That's line. That's true. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Boguslav Rabota, editor in chief of Rzeczpospolitej Daily. Thank you for joining us.